pretty neat thing happened earlier this year. I noticed that a couple of YouTubers I follow, John Heiss and Dave Bocciuto, got a CNC router sent to them by Stepcraft. Intrigued by this, I sent Stepcraft an email myself. I said, hey, I'm one of those YouTuber-y types. Can I get in on this action? And they said yes! And a couple of months of impatiently waiting later, this arrived, my new Stepcraft M1000 CNC router. I love this thing and I've already used it a ton, far more than I thought I would have by now. You would have already seen me use this thing if you watched the go-kart project video on my other channel. But I do have one small issue with it. It's on this cart. When I unbox this thing out of the crate, I put it on this cart temporarily as just a place to house it until I made a permanent table. But it's still on the cart, so I need to make a permanent table for this thing. But not just any old table, this is a CNC router. I'm going to use it to make a table for itself. Design considerations. If the sides of the table are going to be as long and wide as the machine itself is, and they are, then that means the sides of the table will be larger than the work surface of the machine bed. So in order to cut them out on this router, I need to break down the sides of the table into smaller pieces that interlock together. The M-Series has a wide open pass-through machine bed, so if you remove some of these slats, you can mill straight down through to the floor, or whatever is underneath the router. And one of the accessories Stepcraft sent with this thing is a vertical clamping fixture. So about half of this table needs to be wide open all the way down to the floor in the event that I want to use this vertical clamping fixture. This is a computer controlled machine, so the design of this table should be anything but straight and square. It should be curvy and wacky. With those design considerations in mind, this is what I drew up in Fusion 360. It's curvy and wacky and all over the place. The sides are broken down into smaller parts that are joined together with all sorts of strange joinery. Half of it's wide open, and the other half has four drawers for storage. Now, I could have drawn up all the tool paths in Fusion 360, but I prefer vCarve for that sort of thing, so I exported all the faces as DXFs, imported them into vCarve, added dog bone fillets to all the square corners where the box joints were, because router bits can't do square corners, and I'll be making the table out of this, half plywood and half OSB. If you're wondering why I'll be making half of my table out of glued together crap, it's because OSB, when you plane it down, has a really cool look to it. At least I think so anyway, and I'm going to be using both of these types because it's like using two contrasting species of wood, except it's two contrasting types of construction lumber. The OSB I used is too thick because, as I mentioned, the look I'm going for involves running the OSB parts through a planer. Unfortunately, I made two of the OSB parts too big to fit through the planer, so I'll have to surface them down on the step craft using a surfacing bit. One tiny annoyance you encounter when working with any sort of CNC router is clamping solutions, figuring out how to clamp down whatever piece you're working on. For instance, I need to surface this piece right here, which means a surfacing bit is going to pass over every square inch of the face of this piece. So how do I clamp it down? I can't just use a normal T-Track clamp like this one, because the surfacing bit will eat it. Thankfully, Stepcraft sent with this machine an accessory that'll help out in exactly this sort of situation. A vacuum clamping table. All right, moment of truth. Will these joints fit together? <laughs> oh, yeah. Now let's finish everything and glue them all together. Then after a healthy dose of sanding, and round over adding. It's time to assemble everything together. To keep all the parts square for the glue up, I cut out these little bracing triangles and pocket screwed them in place. Ta-da! I like how this is turning out. This plain down OSB really popped when I put finish on it. It adds a lot of visual interest to the table as well. Bet you never looked at oriented strand board as a decorative material before. And you probably still don't, but I like it. As per usual, I made some mistakes. In VCarve, I set the tool path for all of these OSB pieces to be three thousandths of an inch undersized, so all these joints would go together without fuss or hammering. Well, it seems like three thou was a little bit too undersized, and now there's a small gap around all of these joints. 
Not a big deal, and it's certainly not going to compromise the structural integrity of these joints. It's just going to annoy me. And all of the box joint holes are oversized, but I knew that would happen. When I modeled this thing in Fusion 360, I made the material thickness half of an inch, knowing full well that half inch thick plywood is never actually half of an inch thick. It's always undersized. But I hadn't bought the plywood yet, so I didn't know what its actual thickness would be. So I said, screw it, modeled it to half of an inch thick, and said, there's going to be gaps. So there's gaps in the box joint holes. A little bit bigger than I thought they would be, but I knew they were going to be there. Obviously, this table's not done yet. Perhaps more obviously, there's no CNC router on it yet. There we go. Now I need to make a bunch of drawer boxes to fill in those holes down there. Normally I would batch these out on the table saw and then join them together with rabbits or box joints or something. But this is a CNC project, so you know what that means. I'm still going to cut them out on the table saw. I may have cut these drawer parts out on the table saw and miter saw, but I'll be cutting the joinery using the CNC. And because I'm using the CNC, all the joinery is going to involve anything but straight lines and regular shapes. That didn't go brilliantly. I made one of my tool paths narrower than the router bit, so it just didn't. And then I ran my router bit into an aluminum clamp. Somehow it wasn't damaged from that, so all I have to do is redraw this tool path and then keep going. Now to cut the matching joinery on the ends of these boards, I'm going to use the vertical clamping table. I don't care that a robot cut this joint. That is a satisfying fit. I didn't get this joinery right on the first time. This is my first attempt board. And on the one side, I added a two thousandths of an inch offset to make the joint just a little bit smaller so that I wouldn't have to hammer it together. And it was still a little bit tight. So on the second side, well, first of all, I had to do some mental gymnastics to figure out that I needed to mirror this tool path for the outer side of this board. Anyway, after I figured that out, then I increased the offset to four thousandths of an inch. Then when I took it off the CNC, it didn't fit at all. So I went back and looked at the tool path and realized I forgot to add a negative to that number, so it actually increased the size of these pegs by four thousandths of an inch. Once I got those two things figured out, the rest was smooth sailing, and now I have a bunch of drawer boxes with some really interesting and unique joinery. Now to glue these up. To attach the drawer bottoms, I'm cutting a rabbit on the bottom edge of the boxes at the router table. For the drawer bottoms, I'm using this quarter inch plywood that was a part of the shipping crate that my CNC router was shipped in. I even left on the fragile warning stickers. And no, I'm not going to show you how I installed the drawer slides. I didn't want to do it, much less record it. Once I get the drawer fronts positioned in place, I can pin them from the front and then screw them from behind. It's done! Now my CNC router has a permanent home and I have a place to keep all of its crap. This was a fun project, and all one big experiment. While I have designed things in Fusion 360 before, a small amount, I've never designed anything with multiple or interlocking parts, so there was a first for that. And I have used this CNC router before quite a fair amount, but I've never used it to make any sort of furniture. And I've never used the vertical clamping table on it or the vacuum clamping table. It's a lot of firsts for this project, and I think it turned out pretty well. I really like this plain down OSB. It's certainly no hardwood or anything, but for construction lumber, it looks pretty nice. And as an added bonus, this OSB hides imperfections really well. Most of all, I like the drawer box joinery. That's definitely something I'm going to try again in the future. And that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little CNC table project. I'll see you next time.